<laughs> nice energy, Shark. <laughs> Love the confidence. Uh, that was a good division of labor there. Smart. Yeah, you know, they had the team coordination, even right? in the interview, even in the, the media activity. Right? So, well, props to them, props to NRG. And I, I liked that they could own, you know, that, yes, the season uh, in Stage 4 didn't really go how they wanted it to, but kind of the ball's in their court now, right? You got players like Attack and Kellen have had time to integrate with the team. They're off ping, they're playing on land, they've had a boot camp together. So I really think this could be the best iteration of NRG we've seen all year. And to be honest, it couldn't come at a better time because this is the moment that the fans are going to remember, right? This is your, you're playing for all the marbles. Your placement here is going to kind of define this entire season. So it's the opportunity to recover from past mistakes, but also, you know, you are going up against Crazy Raccoon in the first round. It is a really rough draw for NRG. Yeah, like Rack Attack said, right? Stage four, it wasn't a great meta for a team like NRG. And now you come into the playoffs though, and I mean, we've already seen the first match. It's a lot of Mauga being played. We're still in this Juno break kind of composition, right? How is that going to work into NRG's favor, right? Have they stabilized somewhat? Does having both your tanks with you on, on land, is that going to help you enough, right? Or are we going to see something different from this team? Uh, I think there are some questions surrounding NRG and what they'll bring to the table at this playoffs. But considering the caliber of their individual players, I'm really looking forward to see what we can see from them. And if they've been able to find a win condition that maybe can propel them towards some wins in this tournament. Would a map win be a surprise to you or do you expect them to maybe sneak one out there? Uh, you know, I wouldn't be shocked. I think if they can bring some heat and like maybe put Crazy Raccoon on the back foot, if Falcons can lose a map, then so can Crazy Raccoon. But at the same time, I do think NRG are a really serious underdog going up against one of the very best teams in the world, Crazy Raccoon. I mean, frankly, Crazy Raccoon and Falcons, everybody is an underdog when they go up against <laughs> them. I mean, so you, you got to be expecting this. NRG, they've known this matchup for weeks. They have to be prepared. I feel like we have to contextualize that as well, because if I recall correctly in Dallas, the Korean teams didn't drop a single map yeah. to either the North American or the European teams. And so Twisted Minds, you know, they got a map for Europe, which is the first time this year that, uh, you know, a European team has taken a map of, of a Korean team, right? Um, in the OWCS tournaments. So I'm, I'm, just, I'm just excited Th Twisted Minds got a map. Can NRG do the same? Maybe. Which are the teams in this tournament? Do you feel like the, the competition has gotten like tighter? Is it closer now just based on what we've seen in the individual region? Obviously, we haven't seen that cross-region play recently. So where do you think they stack up against region-wise? I mean, I think that's the question on everyone's mind, right? With the, with the regions being separated, this is the first time, well, since Dallas, that we've got to see the regions clash. And of course, you know, for the NA players, of course, they're going to come to the tournament and believe that, you know, they can do well. But you got to remember, North America kind of flopped at Dallas. It was, you know, Korea on top with a bullet, not dropping a single map. But then the EMEA teams play solidly above their North American counterparts. So I think for all the teams coming out of North America, coming here to Stockholm as well, they kind of have a chip on their shoulder, right? They've got a lot to prove. They want to show that they still want it, that they still have the motivation and the passion, really, to compete at this world level. Uh, but Crazy Raccoon and Team Falcon is not going to go easy on you. Like, they are playing for all the marbles. They are not going to give any chances out for free. You've got to be like Twisted Minds and forcibly take that map win. But very much easier said than done. If you listen to some of the European or North American teams as well, I mean, they're kind of like thanking themselves for this Mauga meta because it does neutralize the field a little bit. Mm. Had we been in a position where the Korean teams were so strong at dive composition, if they can just force like Ilios, Gibraltar, like every series, like they have such a high percent a high win percentage chance on those maps, right? Which makes it much harder to win these series, right? And they might still have that advantage. But with this Mauga meta, I think the North American European teams, they're like feeling themselves a little bit like, yeah, like this is more up our alley. We can play these brawl styles. Uh, we can trade these abilities. Maybe it works in our favor a little bit. And if you speak to like Toronto Defiance, for example, Space Station Gaming, like they're liking this stuff. They feel like they have a good chance going into this tournament to take some math off the Korean teams and even make it really far deep into the tournament. Yeah, we have a bunch of teams in this tournament, of course. They have a very clear team identity, regardless of what meta we're seeing. If we're looking at Raccoon as well as, of course, the opposition here in Energy Shock, what's the team identity here, starting with the Shock? I mean, with NRG Shock, I do feel like they would probably want to be in a meta that allows Kellam to shine in that individual tank role. Because I think we've seen, especially in Stage 4, they struggle to kind of find out, are we going to play Kellam, are we going to play Attack? And they swap between those two tanks in between the group stage and the playoffs. But you want your tank to be on a solid pick because that sets up the rest of your team. PG, Scissors, Tree, 
to enable them to really flourish. I think Ultraviolet, he would have preferred to be in like a Batista and a Kiriko kind of meta, but instead you're here in Juno Briggs. So I think for NRG, their playstyle probably isn't going to favor this kind of like Mauga meta, but if you can set up, you know, a few of your players for individual success, like Tree, like PG, for example, I think that could be a win condition for NRG. You know, I think the high pace of this meta with Amalga style, right? Like, look at other traditional rush comps like a Ryan and a Mei. There's a lot of emphasis on individual players hitting their skills, opening up the initiation as well as possible. But the Amalga meta, although it's also a rush and a brawl style, really, I think it's more about team coordination and just, you know, playing off the moment-to-moment -moment strength and weakness of the team, right? You really have to have that read of how strong you and your teammates are. You know, when you need to get aggressive, everyone has to commit to that all at once. And if one player is held back or they're not fully believing in it, things can fall apart really easily. It's much less about individual players executing their vision as much as it is, you know, the whole team being in a collective, having that one mind. And so that's, I think, going to be the true test that this meta asks of these teams. Like, do they have the ability to coordinate the trust, especially in a high pressure environment, you know, with the noise of the crowd, with the pressure of a land, with the world finals on the line? Will you still trust your teammates, right? Like, will, will that call come through uh, uh, when it needs to in the crucial moments? That's a tough test, even for some of the best players in the world. This is day number one of the OWCS World Finals here in beautiful Stockholm, Sweden. We have our very own suite here on the desk. So before we're heading into the action, which is clearly not ready yet, we're going to fill with fun facts about Sweden and Johnny. Oh, please, what, what you got do for enlighten us? me, Zoe. What are the fun facts? You tell me. I'm not Swedish. How would I know? I just want to say the bread has been really on point. I don't the know bread? I, That's European I wasn't, bread, I didn't man. have like an expectation going in, but... At, at breakfast, at you know dinner, just the bread has been great. It's been That's fantastic. Low key, now that we're in Europe, I can say it. American bread, not so good. Europeans just <laughs> not, Europeans just know how to do bread. I say that with every bias I can master. No, it's true. Like I, I gotta say, like as a now, now I have to admit it. Having having eaten delicious breakfast bread and dinner. I just hey, the fika was meal. on point. The fika was wonderful. Then they took I it away. I love the idea of a little. Yeah, they took little, it away. Why? Coffee breaks and buns in the mid was, midday, mid morning. I was surprised they took the, the buns away because I was like, we have second fika coming up. So they, they, they put it, it away and bring it back. Get it on the <laughs> schedule. Bring out the fika. Just keep it here. All you day. know, there's a morning fika and then there's an afternoon fika. So like, what do you? I, li I like this country more every day. Yeah. See, we have a tsnuni and the tsfiri where I come from, which is nine o'clock and four o'clock. Okay. We have our tea time. So you have fika, fika too in Switzerland. We have fika too in Switzerland. We call it. Yeah. I, I'm just amazed. I've, like, I've never heard of Switzerland fika. Well, oh, I never heard of your fika either. <laughs> you so. never heard of fika. <laughs> No, I'm I mean, not. Well, I, you know feel like I, heard, I feel like we're I heard about known. drops. Yeah, we do, actually. We're educating here. Now everyone knows about the Swedish and Swiss traditions of fika, tsnuni, tsfiri, um, tea time, or whatever you want to call it. Wherever you are in the world, one thing's for sure, you can earn drops you if can. you're watching. And That's you can right. earn yourself, uh, you know, a spray of the Dollarhest, which is, you know, iconic in Sweden as well. Yeah, tell it's me more about it. It's made in Dollarnite, so the red horse as well. Uh, what's and it what's has, that red horse? It about? has lit, lots of symbolism and like important facts to it. Um, so I do recommend that if you want to learn more about the Dollhouse, you can go to Wikipedia and check that out. I'm not going to be able to tell you anything about, <laughs> about the origin say, story we of the Dollhouse. to give us that insight. And why it's red. You know, I know I'm Swedish, but like, I, I don't know. Does anyone who's Swedish actually know why it's red? I don't know. Maybe. Probably everyone, but. We'll get Golden we'll, Boy we'll to go ask Swedish we'll people out. about That's right. We send a person so. to, to get the, the insight of that. For now, though, we're ready for our second match of the day. So let's send it over to Golden Boy on stage to get our teams out. Thank you so much for that story. Honestly, I'm totally down going out in DreamHack, meeting the people and talking Fika. I'm down with it, personally. You guys cool with that? I, I mean, I think I'm, yes, no, Fika, yes, yes, yes. See, no, okay, maybe, you know, we'll figure it out later. And in any case, though, what we're not gonna be waiting for is some more Overwatch, because we're gonna be bringing out our two teams right here, right now. Let's go ahead and welcome our first squad to the stage. Put your hands together for Crazy Raccoon! Crazy Raccoon are reigning OWCS Dallas Major Champions, and they have so many fantastic individual players to keep your eyes on. So many players capable of taking over the game. Lip stamps Paul over his team, of course. One of the best hit scan players we have in the entire game. Watch out for him in this series. And let's go ahead and welcome to the stage their opponents. You know them. You love them. It's NRG Shot! 
A fan favorite squad coming out of North America, ready to set the record straight on their season and their year. They may have had a tough stage four, but they're looking to change the story coming in to the OWCS World Finals. Coaches, please fist bump players, take to the stations, and let's go ahead and welcome your casters one more again. It's Uber and Mr. X. Thank you very much, Golden Boy. Yes, this is this is an interesting matchup now. We have what I feel like is the top seeded team, or one of, coming up yeah. against the team with a very shaky stage four in the lead but, up to this event. But NRG Shock seems to be like the fan favorite here. You know, every time Golden Boy is like said the name, like they the crowd is just kind of crazy. So uh, it'll be interesting a little bit how that plays into it. But they go up against Crazy Recruit. I mean, they have just been insane all year long. I really think because of the back line. The back line is just on another level. Absolutely. And this team is also, I think they're perfectly positioned to succeed in this kind of metagame, just based on their lineup in general, right? Having the, the options, a tank as well. Uh, and your DPS are just pretty much out of this world. NRG Shock, they needed Nightmare to knock TSM out of stage four in that lower bracket in order to qualify. So they're their destiny wasn't really in their hands at all. They really had to bank on another team doing the job for them. But they put it behind them. They said, we're out here. They were out, I think, in the UK boot camp as well. They put the work in. They're ready here to show what NA can do. Yeah, I mean, you get you get a boot camp here before, right? You know, maybe you're able to kind of practice same, being in the same room with your tanks, right? Obviously, uh, benefits that. Uh, but you're going up against such a difficult team here in Crazy Raccoon. Also, like the loser of these matches, the early quarterfinals, they'll have to play later today, right? Yep. We have those loser games later. So uh, even if you end up dropping this one, you still got to get composed, fight later in the day. Yeah, you don't have like the overnight period as some teams who fall into the lower bracket do to come back to consolidate, to even look back over the footage. So if things don't go right here, you are straight back into the dugout. You are VOD reviewing and you are trying to fix things quickly. Otherwise, you're, you're running the, to the end of your Overwatch year, essentially. Yeah, I mean, you lose those matches, uh, you got a lot of time to explore Stockholm. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> got the uh, Old Town, right, man? Uh, yo, uh, this is a completely... Uh, I, I saw Aaron Keller this morning, he was like, yeah, I went by the Old Town. I was like, I've been telling people for weeks. Here it is, folks. NRG Shock versus Crazy Raccoon. About to throw it down for you. As much as I love to hear about the old town, man, and, and, and I do. I but. didn't hear much outside of the fact that it does exist. <laughs> <laughs> I, I recommend it. You won't have time, though, unless you, you get fired. So, I mean, maybe you could sort of work something out there. But Ilios is going to be uh, our first There's map. a better chance you're hitting old town. <laughs> <laughs> and it's first to two. Crazy Raccoon versus NRG Shock. And like we discussed, I mean, we I've heard whispers as well that NRG Shock have felt like maybe that sort of standard Malga style doesn't suit them. But a map like this, you can. You can play the dive comp, especially on well. So this might be a pretty good draw for NRG if they don't feel like they want to just spam that Malga based composition. But, but sure, play dive against Crazy Raccoon. I'm sure they're really <laughs> worried about that, right? I mean, uh, they're tremendous on it. Jump in on the ball, so a ball potentially uh, an option here. And also ball, like, pretty gotcha. difficult to Let's take go, out. Let's go, dude! Oh, okay, lip on the tracer as well. Oh man, Knife is out there like, bro, why didn't you keep me on the team? <laughs> okay. On, so again, because we're up against this dive composition, Crazy Raccoon more than happy to play the ball. The rack attack's already been taken down. Junbin lands it. And he's gonna be a problem to deal with. And Archie Shock done a great ways of answering this. Tree won't be able to get like a one-on-one -on -one against this ball ever, really. It's brutal positioning from the Shock early on though, right? You kind of take control of that uh, lighthouse on the side and you're playing right in. You know, the ball can run around in there, you know, cause chaos, bio grenades, uh, the Farah rockets, and yeah, somebody's bound to get picked. It just happened to be racket that. And if there's any player that's going to try and play the ball, it's either Infected uh, of Nightmare or Junbin here on Crazy Raccoon. They are more than happy. Again, this is such a scary team because Shu can pick up the Ana. You have this Ana Lucio composition. Shu can really demonstrate his individual prowess at that role. And the Shock already down by 20%. They are looking to group up, and Trees just switched over to the Echo here. Uh, see if you put a little bit more pressure on the ball, right? Get the ball a little bit weak, get that armor off, then you can start to move up, take the point. Tree here just pops down to the well, breaks that LOS for a time keeper. And actually, Shock are no closer to actually capturing the points here. Crazy Raccoon, Junbin giving those shields out there, that adaptive plating now can be thrown out to your teammates. Tree is obviously something that Junbin can't really interact with for most of the game, but we're close to Barrage. Lip also with a pulse bomb ready to go, and Tree eventually got brought down. They're just not able to collapse on any target. NRG Shock is, uh, that'll be the Kitsune Rush there from UV. 
Uh, not even needed there to use the Pulse Bomb. But uh, you're, you're trying to like locate the target. Like and maybe it's the supports, right? But you're having to move in to the far rockets. And then, I mean, Chorong and Shu are just I insane in terms of being able to keep each other alive. Uh, very difficult to get you know either one of them out of the equation. And then at that point, Crazy Raccoon just has a huge advantage. The tree would love to get close enough to Heesang to blow his cooldowns on the far end and take him down, but my goodness, the range, <laughs> Heesang just ruins him. And then goes for a barrage for the follow-up here, gets two from it, both black liners to Heesang, and now yeah, Crazy Raccoon here is showing why they're considered a cut above in this metagame, and they're not even playing the meta comp, Matt. No, I mean, this is just a dismantling here of the shock early on. I mean, you got a minefield here you can use here over in the choke as uh, Rat getting close to sound barrier doesn't end up getting it short sure off. He's just by Lucky himself two. there. He gets out alive as well, by the way, which is maybe even worse. Scissors tries to blink and touch here after a tracer switch, but NRG Shocker, well, looking a little bit rusty coming out of the gates. <laughs> the audience is such shock pants that, like, they don't want to, like, exactly clap super loud for a Crazy Raccoon, but they're they're like, ah, oh, fine. I mean, they're, they're so sick. I mean, I'll do it. the PGE Nation are just losing it right now. Every time he gets put on the bench, they freak out. Yeah. I know you're out there in the chat losing it. Okay, another map at least. This is obviously the go-to for NRG Shock in yeah. this kind of composition. Looks like we're staying with the Winston for now. But in these, in these kind of compositions, right? It feels like even, you know, with Energy Shock playing something that they probably feel comfortable, this is just even better for Crazy Raccoon, right? I mean, it, this is like a better, like, they are probably so thrilled that somebody's willing to play Dark. Yeah, listen, we don't have to play the map setup. We can yeah. put Jumbo and Ball Shoe on, on this Ana. He's staying on the far up. It, it must be all incredible. There it is. He's saying had a fantastic first round, and that might be putting it lightly. He was so good. We're gonna land some of these directs here, but it's gonna be Choron going first. Tree yells Timber and brings the Lucio down. Rack attack under some pressure, but Crazy Raccoon don't exactly get off on the right foot. All right, so that time you, you get Tree in a position, right? Get him up on the high ground. He's able to do a lot of damage on the Reaper. No real answer from Crazy Raccoon. Is uh, maybe here a shock? It's an opportunity to take the point. Oh, gotta respect that Choron. Slows oh. there on the point, and Ultraviolet clearly had nowhere to go. Energy Shock weren't even able to get a cap off a successful first fight. Mm. Yeah, mm. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's a tough one. Because you feel like you get a little bit of advantage off the start, right? With how things were going. Uh, it does not matter, though. It's crazy. They battle back. They push right up to the spawn. Hell and now on the D.Va. Uh, it, it almost feels like a little bit even worse than the, the Winston. But I think you actually need the defense matrix to deal with the bar and the bias. Yeah, you have to answer that because you don't have like a Baptiste or even an Ana in the back line to really interact with her whatsoever. Heesang has had his run of the place. Toron goes down. This is at least able to get over towards a Lucio now. And Kellen is though suffering some pressure. An attempt at a cap here, but Lip has a pulse bomb. Respects Ultraviolet Suzu, of course, and the ability to cleanse off that Tracer Ultimate, but here it comes. It's thrown down. A rack attack is subjected to it. Ultraviolet's able to find a Kunai kill still on the Tracer. And keeps Anachi in this fight, but they haven't flipped the point yet. This is just being dragged further and further out, and Chorong again gets the better of Scissors. That is dirty. Kellen goes over the edge. And you know, getting a support kill early on is always good, but for Crazy Raccoon, it almost feels like if you lose Chorong early on, it's not like the end of the world, right? I uh, know if he had sound barriers, sure, right? But in that type of situation, uh, you're, you have Shu still on the high ground, able to provide some healing to the players on the low ground. So uh, he's thinking Ko is doing a nice job with the minefield on the point. This time, he's saying pushes on up. Uh, with Shunbin, and they're able to get both supports. Uh, you're pushed up into the spawn now. You've got a bona fide camp going at the moment. Shock have at least the Kitsuna rush to work with now. Chu can throw that nano over. Maybe even the Heesang to give him a more you know, durable barrage. And a death blossom here for NRG Shock, and it's unclear of who's really going to be affected by that. Here's that barrage coming in. No, oh, nano boost given over to Heesang. Not that he needed it. It was all about pressuring Kellen down inside that mech. Far is going to get to the point. Tree knocked out into the open there, and here's the sound barrier now. Got to be responded to by NRG Shock, but Scissors isn't able to get one. He's playing from the high ground here. Katsuna Rush is now in play, and Scissors draws a bead on Chorong, but doesn't connect the pulse bomb. The Lucio is able to get away. Jumbin really trying to drag Yuffie down, and he has no swift step left. He can't escape. Here's a minefield thrown down, and Scissors has no way of getting in. Crazy Raccoon slammed the door in the face of NRG Shock. And it's Kellen hoping for a remake here. Lips pulse bomb, though, finds Tree, and the mini diva goes the way of the dodo. Man, the ball just runs crazy over the shock there. 
Junbin putting on a masterclass. They nano the ball there. That's something you really don't see uh, too <laughs> often there. They nano the wrecking ball, get him on the point. He's able to pick up two, then come up with a minefield and just complete destruction there. The damage mitigation, plus, of course, you know, wrecking ball thriving when surrounded by foes can transfer, of course, that adaptive shielding over to teammates. So again, we, 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 we set up the story. We come in saying, it's a Malga meta. It's Reaper, Echo, Malga, Brig, Juno. And then we get none of that at all in this matchup here. So we have another team like NRG Shock who don't really want to play that way. We kind of know that. Crazy Raccoon, they're more than happy to do it any which way. They can play that Malga set up here. Of course, you've got options of Jun and Max at tank here. Or hey, play the Wrecking Ball, put Shu on the Ana, and basically put your team in a paradise of matchups between players and heroes. Yeah, I mean, even when you get like Chorong early, you still have to deal with Shu. He's so good at even protecting himself. And then uh, it, it doesn't even matter, right? I mean, the, the Wrecking Ball, the Tracer just running through your backline. It is nasty stuff. Let's have a look over what was a very brief map here. Again, uh, it was pretty stellar stuff. Shu there, it's a massive sleep guard connecting on a Kellen. Lip didn't even have to use the Pulse Bomb. We saw them sitting at five ultimates for quite some time. He tanks barrages. Frankly, should be illegal. Some of these were just absurd. Even the Suzu, there's not enough. UV gets caught inside the room. Multi-kill off the, the back of that one. But frankly, there's nothing in the composition for NRG Shock that answers this Farah. Nothing that directly interacts with Hisang allows him to even play close up without a lot of threat. I also feel like, uh, you know, if your answer is like, oh, we're just going to like switch and play Diva, play Diva? like that. For, uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of your, your chalk, I feel like, at that point, where uh, you see the stats heavily yikes. in favor of Crazy Raccoon. That is a, a yikes for sure there. Uh, and I mean, just you, you could see the gameplay. I mean, you watched the, the first map. You knew it was going to be an ugly scorecard. Over over uh, you know two stages, two rounds, and an entire, entire control map. That is pretty rough stuff here for NRG Shock, a team who we knew will be the underdog coming into a matchup like this, especially against a Crazy Raccoon but, that can kind of do it all right But, now. but Twisted Minds is the underdog against Falcons yep. to put up a good fight. So yep. I think like the, oh, we're the underdog, like we're supposed to get destroyed, like not really great argument, right? Like I think you want to see them put up a better fight. Do it, Matt. Lay down the law. Sura Vasra is going to be our second map in this series. This is NRG Shock's pick here. So yeah. they're hoping a Flashpoint map can kind of get them there. It's not typically a map where you want to run Winston at every opportunity here. I've heard that maybe this team has dabbled a little bit with the Queen. Well, there's no subs. So with no subs, you figure we're going to see something similar. You right? won't see it. So you won't see attack, I think, for most of this tournament. I yeah, think yeah. The, the meta really, you know, favors Kellen here uh, at tank. But again, on the other side of things, you, you have a lot of options for Crazy Raccoon. Yeah, so uh, with Suravasa coming up, if you're Crazy Raccoon, you just keep playing the same thing. I mean, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you consider switching, but I mean, the ball looks so strong. and. I know even with like, you know, a brawly style comps that want to like stay together, the ball even still puts up a pretty good fight. Uh, I know in that, like you mentioned, like we saw Infected in NA play it, I know on Busan a lot, right? We saw a lot of, you know, Wrecking Ball being played on that map in particular, where, yeah, it's it's, it's potentially an option to keep moving forward. See, uh, Crazy Raccoon, Boop Canton, Poland. They got prepared for the, uh, the, the winter-esque wins pretty early on. They even tried some local yeah, delicacy, yeah. apparently. It wasn't really about, you know, uh, the, the gameplay for them. No, it's it about, about getting the, outside. The climate, the climate. Walking yeah. both ways <laughs> uphill in the climate. snow, you know what I mean? Really, that's how Moon likes to get his troops sort of ready for battle. Yeah. Very much the disapproving father figure. I, I heard the pierogies were a hit, though. I'm sure they had some. <laughs> I'm sure they sampled some of the local delights. But obviously, that meant that all of our teams here competing in the OWCS Grand Finals, they yeah. were in Europe. So there was yes. a lot of screaming that went on. Um, Crazy Raccoon in the past, I think, screamed a lot with Zeta Division back in their home region. I remember Junk Park in an interview with Commander Rex actually he sort of says, we couldn't get a scream with Crazy Raccoon or Zeta because they were just screaming each other all the time. Yeah. So they've got obviously a lot of op options for that kind we of got a little, little chair swap here for the, Rack. The chairs, man. Again. Do like, pl players get super, like, uh, you know, uh, specific about, you know, the chairs, the desk yeah. is it Is it like, like the memory foam booty pad needs to be calibrated? Like, I, I don't know, man. Yeah, I mean, when we were doing COD, Krim was very about the air conditioner. He always felt that sometimes the air conditioner was stronger really? or whatnot. Yeah, we would was, never thought an American would just he would be complain. particular about air conditioning. He would complain yeah. about the, okay. <laughs> the, the air con. Considering I, I walk into a Costco and it's like Arctic in there and it's yeah. like 50 degrees Celsius outside. It is. It is the Arctic right outside that bay door. You know I what? Mean, it was open it, yesterday. That ain't even wrong. Nah, it was cold. Yeah. <laughs> Winter's definitely set in outside of it. Right in here, it's heating up. Crazy Raccoon and NRG Shock about to head into their second map. It will be Suravasa, a selection by NRG Shock to try and stay alive in this first to two. So it could be a quick series if you can't find a foothold. 
Yeah, so Surafasa, right? Uh, I know we typically see a lot of teams play like you know, New York City really throughout the entirety of the year in the OWCS, but Surafasa, maybe a little bit of a wild card pick here for NRG Shock. I I don't know if you can play, like, even if you're not the best at the MAGA, like, you think, like, okay, maybe we can give them some trouble if they're going to, like, play ball the entire time. It feels like you kind of playing the Winston is just kind of conceding into, like, what, like, you're not really forcing Crazy Raccoon to react too much of anything, right? This is kind of map we've seen, uh, yeah, even, like, in the past, like, a lot of teams even yeah. going for, like, Ryan, so Sigma, comps here. The Queen, yeah, for Crazy Raccoon, I would, wouldn't rule it out. And we'll uh, get that flipped at uh, the top of the screen. Yeah, it's yeah, the so, shock. Excuse me. Uh, currently, the shock uh, orange, uh, you know, looking to potentially play uh, Kellen on the queen, which would be a bit of a changeup. I, I think. Look, if you can't play the Maga, I think playing the the queen is a way better idea. Yeah, and this was rumored from uh, NRG Shock here. So it is Crazy Raccoon on match point right now. And again, we're working on getting those names flipped for you up the top. It's orange is your NRG Shock appropriately. Crazy Raccoon are in blue. So let's see how Kellen makes use of this Junker Queen. Oh. Again, the memory foam. Tactical pause. It's just not a chair pause. So this is awesome because we're on the stage, so we have a great idea. So the Shock players are currently looking over at Crazy Raccoon, so I would assume that the Shock are fine. Yeah. Uh, Although Raktak is talking to an admin, or oh, maybe oh. that's just Wheats. Yeah, it looks like we got a little bit of a discussion going down. We'll figure out what's going on here, but... Uh, feels like a, I know it's a Crazy Raccoon. So they're going to come out here uh, and they're going to be playing the MAGA based setup, right? Yeah. So uh, they'll be playing the MAGA. All right. Let's see what Kelton can do here against the MAGA. We've already seen, of course, Rampage. Obviously very effective against MAGA's cardiac overdrive, but there's going to be more to it here. You want to brawl? Queen definitely a great option here, but the poke damage can be problematic. Here comes that stop here already. Jumpy looking to get engaged and NRG Shock taking a ton of damage. The commanding shout now used, but Rack Attack is very low and Jumpin wants to chase them straight out of the map here. He even has time to stop and pick up the Mega Health Pack. They're never getting rid of this Malga here. Kellen already bowled over. Jumpin trying to avoid Scissors' is focusing beam. He's saying instead gets him. Yeah, and this is what we expected to see a lot of teams play, what we're seeing from Crazy Raccoon right now, where you have the Echo Reaper in the mix with the Maga, uh, the backline pretty stable across, like, multiple comps, right, at this point, uh, where NRG Shock, uh, look, if you can't play the Maga, I think the Queen's probably the next best option, so I like the comp that they've decided on here. I think much better odds than playing, like, a Winston or a Dive type of mirror. The Crazy Raccoon just don't want to respect NRG Shock at all. They really want to close the gap and make it hard for Tree to get Good amounts of damage over a longer fight. Keep those cooldowns coming. Knife catch there on towards John Mim, but he won't be joints too far forward. Just about that poke damage here for Kellen. Swing of the axe. Dodge there as Choron goes to the low ground. Here's an orbit array coming in from Shu, and Choron gets healed up in a pinch. Tenaji forced to give a lot of ground here, but they have ultimates of their own and an orbit array to make use of. But Rack has gone down just as he could have built a rally. That might be the point here. Can they flip inside this orbit array? It's he's tank getting rid of scissors despite him having a Juno ultimate to work with. And he's tank dupes this queen and gets a free ultimate. Kellen will still be anti-healed after the transformation. That is pretty tough to beat. Yeah, the point flips for the Shocks. So they're going to get a little bit of percentage here, but it is a, a, a brutal fight as Crazy Raccoon. The, the dupe there, we typically see like the dupe on the, the Maga, right, in those type of compositions, but the dupe on the Queen. I think Shock coming in with like a next fight, right, with the Queen ult. This is where we saw... Sombra. Yeah, success in the last half. Yeah, Sombra is uh, like he's spotted from a mile away. Early case fight, though, go for a pick straight away. This is forced into a dupe, but he's going to be knocked out of it instantly. No chance to make any use of that Echo Ultimate whatsoever. So Scissors eventually falls down, and that's Crazy Raccoon more than happy to spend the cage on a free pick. Sombra here, Tree being hunted right now. Kellen forced back on the point now, as he did, of course, go for a Rampage that didn't quite hit the mark. Rack attack is down. Kellen now under a lot of pressure, and the Sticky Bombs will eventually claim him. He's saying, can do no wrong, whether it's the Fara or the Echo. This guy is dominant. Yeah, and the hardest part, right, is going to be keeping Kellen alive with that front load of damage of the Reaper and then the finishing beam, you know, focusing beam of the Echo, right? So uh, once Kellen has the shout like gone, he's like on, on the back foot. And I mean, there's just a lot that Crazy Raccoon can take advantage of there. You don't have that same level of durability, really. And I guess you're hoping for, for Tree to 
play around EMP is pretty well, heavy. The, the monkey can stand there and fight, right? Yeah. You, you have the cardiac overdrive going. You can just stand there and fight, right? Where the queen, uh, you have a brief moment of opportunity. Queen really has to get within dangerous range to be most effective. Okay, initially they're trying to drive rack attack there, but they peel off the brick briefly. Another dupe here from Queen, good axe hit. That's gonna get a lot of free on charge here. And the EMP does come in, that's gonna blow Junpin over, but it's a one for one in the fight, and there was already an orbital ray that came down from Shu. Crazy Raccoon are benefiting from it, and he's saying, did get a duped ultimate from the Junker Queen. It's Freck attack, who got bowled over again. What a star for Crazy Raccoon, man. These guys are looking sharp. Yeah, I guess uh, the positive there for Shock is uh, the point I uh, wasn't taken at the moment, right? So they're not now, so, so they're not down by like 50%, right? But uh, still, I mean, it just feels like that was a great opportunity, right? You had an ICMP there from Tree. Uh, it's just the dupe of the, the Queen, right? You get a Rampage coming on through there. Get the Queen low enough so that once you get back into the Echo form, you're able to finish it off. This is an opportunity, though. Uh, dupe the Maga potentially and get another cage fight. Let Depth lost them hacked up and the virus come in from Tree. It's going to be the cleanup on the Reaper. But a loose rack attack might be even more important, especially when Chorong has Rally. Oh, the sneaky connection on Scissors guarantees that Echo kill. And a stop comes in now to pressure Kelvin away. He only has the Juno healing, and that is not going to be enough in this economy. Up to 50, 9% and counting for Crazy Raccoon. Oh. One last chance for NRG, and he's saying he's been perfect. I mean, looking phenomenal on the Echo. Uh, lots of, like you mentioned, the Sticky Bomb connections. Uh, just putting down a lot of damage with even the primary fire, and then uh, it feels like every time there's a player below 50%, they're getting finishes off of the focusing beam. Genuinely for me, the best echo in the competition right now, man. I think it's an easy one to say. Ultraviolet caught there by Shrew. The torpedoes actually claim them. Here comes a rampage through as a dupe of a brick here for Hisang. Shrew did fall, but I mean, we had a flip by NRG Shock at the last moment. Here, Grace Raccoon will have to double back in just a moment. Going to use a free rally, but it will be short as Hisang comes out of doom. Rack does go down, and eventually Crazy Raccoon do have to go and flip. Yeah, I believe the Rampage was actually knocked off Corsair by a little bit of a whip shot, so Kellen only was able to connect with one there. So it's Shock who gets into the back line, and I believe it's Tree who ends up flipping the point. But EMP, it's going to be Crazy Raccoon taking it right back. Straight away, EMP gets popped, flip, almost affected by the virus there. Yep, it did come in. Jimmy, though, able to bring Rack Attack down, and again, the brick gets picked off. Crazy Raccoon, great target acquisition from them here. All but away from Shu. One comes in from NRG. Shock here, but they've lost that Sombra. And Kellen is going to be surrounded. Jumbin looking to gun her down. He's saying might have been removed there in that canopy fight. But Jumbin is still very, very healthy. Kellen wants to come forward. Now those miniguns are starting to find the mark. But this is quietly has amassed two important kills in this fight. Sticky bombs on towards Chorong. Do heal that elimination. But this is caught in the corner. Jumbin eventually able to make him a carb mirror on the wall. Out of the echo and a death blossom here from Lip. Inside that cardiac overdrive means a Reaper is virtually unkillable. Three kills for Lip. And that will be CR eventually take that flashpoint. And, and Jonbin did such a tremendous job holding on to that Cardiac Overdrive for the right time, right? You knew that he was getting two players off the spawn to come back on in. Had the ability, just kind of played around the cover there. Uh, and the Central Pillar was able to get healed up a little bit. Then used the Cardiac Overdrive when they were pushing on in with the Reaper. And then at that point, the Reaper and the Maga basically unkillable. Duplication on the horizon for Heastank. Maybe another Queen into the mix. Oh, what a stop! Yeah, again, Rack Attack is the first to go down. There's just not much he can do if he's hit by that Malga charge. And now it's Kellen getting a lot of scrutiny. Won't have an ultimate available in time as he falls. CR with another first fight. This, this is a fast series, potentially, right? You know, you think first to two uh, with the first series of the day, right? It goes to three, so you don't really kind of consider how fast some of these could go. But... I think it's our biggest mismatch on paper, Matt, coming in. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, it might be. Just uh, with Crazy Raccoon feeling like maybe a better team in this meta, but no one's playing the bloody meta. Oh, they are now at least. Takes fight here. Kellen caught inside of it. Needs to swing with the axe. Doesn't have the access to his ultimate though. That's the problem. No chance to rampage his way through that mess of players. The rack attack going down here. Shu did use that orbital ray, but NRG Shock don't have a whole lot to leverage in this next fight. It had to be a pretty darn good rampage. Maybe an EMP to back it up. Yeah, but you think there's going to be like a big dupe coming in here and then also potentially like a death blossom over from the side. So we'll see how they end up navigating this tree. Could also get in position here for a big EMP. TP away, it's going to be an EMP. Catching on to five. This has got to be here if it's going to be anywhere for NRG Shock. Tree goes down to the rampage. Is a great follow-up as predicted. Jimmy eventually bleeds out and NRG Shock finally gets them the foothold here on Suravasta. <laughs> okay, we're going for these. Lip hard to kill during that ultimate, but didn't have the damage. Clean up the queen. He'll be slinking away. It's wild he's still alive. It's, uh, 
to be able to get back towards the rest of his team. So somehow Lip able to stay alive and Shock flip the point where this is an absolute must win fight, right? You got the orbital race, you're in position to potentially do it. Right here for Ultraviolet. Here's the Doom of the Queen. He's saying touches down, goes for it now. Kamani shout in response here from Kellen. He say actually made use of it there as well. Pack there onto the Queen. He saying can't use that rampage. He's knocked out of it during the windup. Now a little bit vulnerable. He gets the swap out in the open. And NRG Shock have finally found a burst of momentum to work with. Crazy Raccoon forced yeah. onto the back foot, forced into sport. Yeah, I mean, you chain two fights in a row back together. This is going to be the toughest one, though. No Orbital Ray, you're just going to have the rally to work with here. And CR, I mean, you hold on to some of these ultimates, right? Kind of playing for that last fight. You got a rally to match, but the Orbital Ray. And goes Torog here. Oh, lands it on the tree. The stun ends up claiming the Sombra. Rack Attack did get a rally off here, but no Sombra again to work with in this fight. It'll be the seven foot gaming warlord plunging into the mix as Kellen brought down by a focusing beam. Crazy Raccoon can now walk back to flip the point here, and it's unclear if NRG Shock have any chance of keeping this going. Yeah, we'll see if anybody can get here to touch Trigger OT, but even if they do... They get it. Yeah, it's not going to be for long. And that's Tree getting taken down, only the Sombra to keep things alive, and Crazy Raccoon... A comfortable sweep. Not of the reverse variety in this series, it's a 2-0. Nah, just the dominant performance from Crazy Raccoon. They come in, they take care of business, now they move on as Shock uh, didn't really feel like you even learned a lot there if you're Shock, right? Did we learn much? <laughs> not really. I mean, because uh, the, the match is so quick. And you know, uh, I did think that Shock looked better when they were playing the Queen. I think playing, especially, I know, the, the Winston or Diva into Crazy Raccoon is going to be tough for just about anybody. But I think they look better playing the Queen. The Sombra is an interesting touch as well. Yeah, we definitely look forward to some discussion here from our experts on like the role of the Sombra in that setup. Again, pretty good at neutralizing individuals, but there are too many impactful players on Crazy Raccoon. You can't shut them all down at once. And they got to be feeling pretty good about this start here, but again, very much within expected parameters for our number two seed from the Asia region, who many teams have been whispering, says they feel like they even have the edge over Falcons, the team that was coming out of that Asian region in the number one spot here. And look, this is probably the shakiest team out of the NA region, but again, we saw very little from NRG Shock in their debut here. Yeah, I mean, I think Crazy Raccoon obviously takes care of business here. Uh, it's really exciting. Potentially, we get more of that, you know, Falcons versus Crazy Raccoon rivalry. But I think our next two games are going to be really fascinating. I said we're going to head over to Danny here for a post-match interview with the Victors. Mr. Matt, thank you very much. What is up, everybody? I'm here with Lip from Crazy Raccoons coming out from a dominant win. Fantastic stuff. I mean, I, I would say that this was, you know, this was pretty an easy win for Crazy Raccoons. I want to focus on something else. Of course, great victory. But another thing is, Lip, you've been selected as our Asia MVP chosen by the fans. So, Stockholm, give it up for Lip. I want to hear from you. How does it feel to be our Asia MVP? 자 오늘 승리도 어, 당연히 중요하지만은 또 거기다가 또 팬들이 선정한 이번 연도의 아시아 MVP로서 소감 한 말씀 부탁드리겠습니다. 어 일단 어, 아시아 부분에서 MVP를 정확히 MVP를 투표해 주신 팬분들께 감사드리고 또 오늘 스웨덴에서 첫, 처음 열리는 이제 경기도 응원해 주신 팬분들께 감사하다는 말씀 전해드리고 싶습니다. Uh, first of all, thank you everybody for voting me as our Asia MVP. I really, really do appreciate that. And also, for thank you for uh, cheering us on uh, to win all the matches as well. Thank you very much. I mean, Lip, this is nothing new. I mean, throughout your whole career, even in the Overwatch League, you've won Grand Finals. You've achieved so much, got a lot of awards. What does this Asia MVP mean for you? So, well, Lip 선수는 당연히 이번에도 뭐 이제 아시아 MVP 뿐만이 아니라 예전 오버워치 리그에서도 뭐 급파도 우승을 해본 적이 있고 또 많은 상장을 계속 받아왔었는데 이번 아시아 MVP가 좀더 중요한 이유가 있다면 뭐가 있을까요? 어 일단 과거에도 이제 연속으로 수상을 한 만큼 이번 연도도 처음 생기는 상이지만 좀 그런 영광을 좀 오래 유지하고 싶었어서 좀 기대를 했었는데 이번에도 처음으로 받게 돼서 아직까지 끝, 끝, 그냥 끝까지 유지할 수 있는 게 저는 참 좋다고 생각해요. Uh, it's, throughout the whole years, I did get a lot of uh, awards, and I think this is very special because this is the very first award that I got from uh, OWCS, and it's a meaningful one because I want to carry on this legacy for myself as well. All right, I'm going to end the interview here. Lip, thank you so much, everybody. Give it up for Lip one more time. That's take it away.
Thank you so much, Danny. Congratulations to Crazy Raccoon, uh, one round done. Many more to go in order to reach the OWCS Grand Final here, of course. Now we're here to break it all down for you. But first, a few words here on Lip, of course, as our Asia MVP voted by the people as well as the teams. Everyone got to chime in on that one. Not a shocker, I would say. Lip has been collecting trophies and, and, and all sorts of awards ever since he started his Overwatch career. And this is one of many, but a meaningful one to him, as we just heard. He's the GOAT, stays on top. Not is much he, more to say. Is he the, like, literal GOAT? He's certainly in the greatest of all time conversation when it comes to Overwatch Esports, Jake. He's certainly a hoofed animal. And now it? another, like, Asia MVP. I mean, he was a three-time uh, three role star in the Overwatch League. Sure. He was a sole leader in that category, right? So this is guy since he came into the Overwatch League in 2020 that has just been fantastic every single season, every single year. And this has been another one of those years, Jake, where Lip has just been dominant and arguably the best hitscan player in the world. So now, certainly in the greatest of all time conversation and yeah. with a win, if Crazy Raccoon win the entire event, I think it should probably be fair to say that Lip is the greatest Overwatch player of all time. I think that is a statement that definitely can be made. And also it's a great statement for all the veteran players out there. We have so many young, talented players now in this open ecosystem, which are nipping at their heels. So for Lip to make a statement and say like, nah, nah, we still got it. We still got it. Getting that first MVP award here in our first ever OWCS season. Now, of course, if we're looking here at the match we just saw, Energy Shock, that was, that was an uphill battle for sure for them, given that, you know, Raccoon were just on point. It was a very oppressive... Not uh, much of a battle, sorry. Not much of a battle. A battle was had. A battle was had. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Raccoon coming out on top here, to no one's surprise, we did see that. There were a few moments for Energy Shock where it looked like they almost got some momentum going, a team fight here, a team fight there. But Raccoon, very oppressive play style. It's very hard to go up against. Yeah, I mean, I think this first map really set them off really well on Ilios. It, it's, it's a strat that pretty much no one else plays, but Lucio, the Ana, the Wrecking Ball, Farah Tracer, this is a Crazy Raccoon special, and it's just incredibly hard to prepare for because, number one, there's no other team in the world that is even going to attempt this, and number two, you're going up against some of the best players to ever do it across the roles, across the heroes. So much comfort and confidence for them. So, I mean, Ilios is a brutal map one draw, and then you see what they can do on the Rush comp on map two, and, I mean, Yes, a little competitive. There's some team fights here and there, but come on. If it's any less competitive than that, it's like it's, it's, it's you're getting fine. desperate. <laughs> the tempo and pressure coming out from Crazy Raccoon is just ridiculous. And I think we saw it especially on Ilios. Like, they were pushing spawn doors, right? And they did so on Saravasa as well. But you saw that everyone got involved. Even Chorong on the Lucio got into the backline, you know? Utilized the sound barrier to go aggressive. And that is what Crazy Raccoon does do so well. They have such incredible individual skill, and they put so much pressure from every single position that it's really hard for a team like NRG to even walk up, to take space, because you're constantly challenged by every single player on the enemy team. And that is how Crazy Raccoon get it done. They put so much pressure on you, you are not able to walk up, you're not able to get any momentum, and they get shut down in this series to wow NRG. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't their series to win. I think that they were most likely aware of that. Now they're finding themselves in the lower bracket going up against Twisted Minds. And one of these teams will be going home already today. How do you think those two teams, after we've seen both of them on the stage, will stack up against one another? I do think there's there's hope for NRG in that match, given that, you know, what ended up being the Achilles heel for Twisted Minds was this queen comp with, like, a lot of aggression. That's what... That's what Falcons found as the answer to this uh, uh, Ash Farah style that Twisted Minds wants to run. And I think that's actually a style that NRG could potentially replicate, right? Bringing a really high pace with the Queen. That's a style I think that they already want to play. So they could stack up well. At the end of the day, though, as much as you can, you know, you have like a theoretical counter. If Quartz and Lambda are playing super well, finding these opening kills, picking you off on the walkups, if they can continue to deliver that kind of performance, NRG could be in real trouble. I think what is also so scary for NRG going into that series is that Twisted Minds, they have a pretty good win condition. They know what they're going to do with the poke composition. We can find picks with the Fara, we can find picks with the Ash, and that's what we're going to rely on. We're going to disengage. And it's in NRG's court to try to adjust accordingly, try to work around that. And that can be an uphill challenge, especially when the mechanical scale from Labda and Quartz is so high. So that, it'll, it'll be on NRG to kind of adapt accordingly to Twisted Minds. And that can be tough to do, especially in the moment when you haven't gotten that much practice against them.
A lot of pressure on Tree, I think, right? We saw Stalker go head-to-head -head with Quartz and be super competitive. Can Tree do the same? I think he has the skill, but this is a big match and he absolutely needs to perform. Yeah, we saw how well it worked from Tissot Vines against Falcons. Now, of course, they're looking to replicate this performance when they go up against